Alright, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and today we are going to be doing an explanation of a supervised circuit on a fire alarm control panel. So what the supervised circuit does is it basically sends a small amount of current backwards through the systems of initiating devices and the NACs. And that way it checks to make sure that all connections are secure and that there's a continuous flow. So that way if the connection breaks, like say something happens with an initiating device or someone removes the smoke detector, it's basically a tamper, a tamper proof system. So what happens is when the circuit is broken, the panel will go into trouble. And mine, because it has a, a nice indicator screen, you'll be able to see what zone it is and what the trouble is. So um, all, of my, all of my initiating devices and NACs are supervised. And there are two types of supervising zones, at least on this panel, class A and class B. So go ahead and open it up, I can show you. So zones 1 and 2 on my panel are class A. Zones 1 and 2 are my two pole stations. It does not matter if these are class A or class B. Class A means that there are two wires that come from the panel and go down to the pole station. And then there are then a second set of two wires that go from the pole station back up to the panel, completing a circuit without having with the switch not having to be activated. So when the circuit is complete, the panel knows that there is an initiating device here and that everything's okay. Class A also falls in here. And then the second type of supervising circuit is class B. Class B is where two wires come out of the panel and go to an initiating device, and then at the end of the ignition at, bleh, at the end of the initiating device, there's a resistor. You only put the resistor in the end of line device. That is what EOL stands for, end of line. So if you had say ten smoke detectors hooked up to one zone, they go through in parallel and they just keep going. And then the last smoke detector in the series will have a resistor in it completing the circuit. And the resistor allows a small amount of current through telling the panel that there is current flowing through, but not enough to send it into alarm. So if we open up the smoke detector, you'll see there's the resistor. And if we are to take the resistor out, just let me screwdriver real quick, just a second. So if we are to take the resistor out, the panel will go into trouble. Scroll down, you'll see fire trouble zone 4. This is zone 4, saying that the circuit is no longer complete. So we put the resistor back in, the trouble has gone. The screen still says trouble, there it goes. The screen takes a minute to load after the LED light. So once the resistor is back in, screw that in real quick, there we go. So now the resistor is back in, there's no trouble, and everything about it works. So that's like if someone, say, wants to smoke, and they disabled a smoke detector. The panel would know that there's something wrong, and that someone should go check it out. There's a detector missing. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, trip class A zones just because I don't want to take the whole everything off. But in zones where they're not being used, like I'm only using four out of the possible ten zones on this panel. This is a ten zone panel. You put resistors in for the same reason. To tell the panel that everything's okay, that you don't need to go into trouble for it. So if we go up here to the NACs, the NACs are the same way. NACs on this panel are a class B supervised circuit. So if I were to remove the Gentex because the bracket stays on with the wiring terminal and the horn strobe slides off, 
the pan will go into alarm. For some reason it takes longer for the NAX to trip the panel than for the initiating circuit. But if you see, uh, let me set the alarm down. Okay, so up, there goes the trouble. So up here, this is the power in, and then the, this is the power out to the next zones. So that's why it's S plus, S plus. This is where the circuit is broken. Let me acknowledge that real quick. Knowledge, silence. And then down here is the, sorry, it looked weird. Down here is the horn strobe circuit, or nah, just the horn circuit. This one is not supervised. Well, it is supervised, but not for uh, this one. If I were to take it out of this alarm, because this one's at the end of line, it will trip. I, I haven't been able to find a way to get the horn supervised with this alarm yet, because it's only two terminals instead of three. So that is a supervised circuit. So when I go to put the knack back in, it will complete the circuit. I have such trouble with sliding the Gentex back in. Sometimes it's not funny. Come on. There we go. So the Gentex is back in. You'll see the trouble will go away in a second. I don't know why the knack takes so long. I mean, I guess I'd rather have I guess I'd rather have, like, I think smokes are the biggest thing that are tampered with so people can actually smoke. But, yeah, so everything is supervised. You'll see here, because I don't have these hooked up, you see there's the end of line resistor. And that's what's telling the panel it's okay, <laughs> basically. So you can see I have SEOL -E for the strobe end of line and then EOL for the horn end of line. So if you ever see on a device uh, EOL or a sticker that says this device contains the end of line resistor, that's what it means. It's for a supervised class B circuit. And then class A is the two wire. So I hope now whenever I talk about a supervised circuit or EOL or anything like that, you guys know what I actually mean now. So I hope this video helps and have a wonderful day.